Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for being here today, Mr. Salazar. Uh, Mr. Secretary, as you know, a number of environmental groups in Colorado and elsewhere have pressured you to cancel oil and gas leases that were signed and issued to the successful high bidders following BLM public auctions. You were asked about this issue during an interview you gave with the editorial board of the Grand Junction Daily Sentinel in August of 2009. You were quoted as saying that you would not withdraw, could, could not withdraw the Lone Plateau leases in Colorado because once these leases were signed, they provided the buyers with a property right that you and your agency were bound to protect. Since I have a short period of time, I would appreciate it if you could answer the following few questions with a yes or no. Uh, do you still stand by this statement that you made to the Grand Junctional Daily Sentinel in 2009? We, um, that, that statement was accurate then. It would be accurate today if those issues have, if those leases um, uh, were in fact issued and, and, and signed. Okay. The, 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 there, there is litigation on the Rome Plateau, uh, Congressman Lamborn, and uh, efforts to try to create a, a program okay. forward that will allow the development of oil and gas on the Rome Plateau, okay. but to do it with the best practices available from the oil and gas industry and those who have been part of negotiations that have been underway. Okay. And then as Secretary of Interior, do you and your agency, and I'm assuming the answer is yes, but just so to verify, that you intend to protect the private property rights of companies that are holding federal oil and gas leases that have been signed and issued? The answer is we will protect private property rights and follow the law okay. in terms of okay. what the law requires us to do. And, and are you aware that the Mineral Leasing Act requires the BLM to issue oil and gas leases within 60 days following payment by the successful high bidder of the remainder of the bonus bid, if any is owed, and the first year's annual rental. Yeah, I, I believe that there there is language in um, the statutes that, uh, that that make those requirements. But I will also tell you, uh, uh, Congressman Lamborn, that uh, most of the leases that have been issued, frankly, have been protested and gone into litigation, which essentially is what has caused, if you will, the the uh, backlog of much of the activity, and much of it happened because of the rush to judgment to lease everything everywhere without approaching it in the way that we are okay. approaching yeah. it, which is to be smart yeah. from the start. And once you're into litigation, you can, you can point the specific statute out to me uh, okay. Doug, okay. as many yeah. times as you can, but you're not going to get a lease essentially that's going to get into production. And I understand the courts litigation. may interfere, as you point out, and tell you to do something. Yeah, I'm talking about activity by your department separate from whatever a court might say pursuant to litigation. So here's what I'm concluding with. A local forest supervisor in Wyoming recently signed a record of decision in which she decided that the government should cancel oil and gas leases that have already been issued. Now since BLM leases, uh, leases out federal oil and gas resources underlying national forests, how and when do you intend to notify the Forest Service that the Department of Interior cannot and will not cancel federal oil and gas leases that have been issued for Forest Service parcels? Congressman Lamborn will, will follow the law, but I think the results uh, speak for themselves. I think in 2010, the fact that we issued 5,200 uh, leases in 2010, that we project that in 2011 we'll issue 7,200 leases in the onshore, the fact that we have 41 million acres that have already been leased out to oil and gas development, I think that those statistics speak for themselves. Uh, those are good statistics, but in this instance, uh, we see a possibility that according to what one local forest supervisor in Wyoming would like to do, uh, the result would be a, the cancellation of existing leases that have been issued. They, you told the Grand Junction Sentinel that in another case, in the Rhone Plateau case, that would be a violation of private property rights. Wouldn't that also apply here? Uh, Congressman Lamborn, uh, I'd be happy to take a look at the specific case that you are referencing here and uh, get back to you on the specifics. I don't have the information in front of me with respect to the specific case you speak about. D do you agree that that would be a violation of, 
uh, apart from whatever a court might say, that that's a violation of private property rights. I don't know. I, I will look into the case that you raise if you get that information to my staff, and we'll get back to you with the specifics of the particular case. I'm not going to speculate based on this conversation and, and your questions here. Okay, thank you. Time of the gentleman has expired. Uh, I, I would.